What's going on my broskies, my name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we're taking a look at yet another one of the level limit breaks that arrived during late August 2022 being the movie characters and this guy right here version 1 Sanji now when the batch of level limit breaks first released I actually didn't have Sanji at max level limit break I only had him around level 3 I needed to actually feed him like five posters in order to get into level 5 and of course the main reason for that was because of the recent release of Grand Voyage versus Don Krieg in the Baratie now, honestly speaking, I wouldn't go out of your way to spend posters on this Sanji just to beat the Grand Voyage versus uh, Don Krieg. I just don't think it's overly worth it, considering this character, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, you're probably not going to use him that often, but he does have some very interesting mechanics, and they really gave him some substantial buffs. And, you know, he actually in Pyre Rumble, I was reading some of his Pyre Rumble abilities, he actually looks kind of okay and somewhat usable in Rumble, but, you know, he is an int unit, so you got to find some synergy there. But... Just in regular content, I think this guy is actually pretty solid, and due to his captain action, where he can jump and he can avoid a lot of different debuffs, that effect is exceptionally powerful, as we've seen with Legend Toki, who actually I used in a couple of these clips here, because, you know, with Sanji and his jump mechanic, he gives himself a substantial attack buff, and then if you stack Toki on top of that, it gives that unit, you know, a 3.5 times attack and all boost. And then if you have the other level limit break that released uh, around the same time period, which is Jinbei, who released, I think, um, a couple months back at least, his level limit break is also very powerful, providing color affinity and really good utility um, for fighter characters in particular. And he actually synergizes really well with this Sanji. And, of course, if having those two at level 5 really helps you in the Grand Voyage versus Don Krieg in the Baratie, but obviously Toki was a great asset to the teams, allowing Sanji to just have huge single target damage, but that is obviously one of the big downsides is that he is an int character where he only is really going to shine versus psi based content, because that's where the color affinity and such will probably be more useful. Because, you know, when we compare this to something like Stampede Luffy, Stampede Luffy, you know, he has the really good captain ability utility, which is great. But then the special ability provides himself with pretty much like a self Toki boost, whereas like Sanji doesn't really do that per se. So, you know, Sanji needs a little bit more help to be a bit more useful. So in that case, he's probably only going to be useful versus Psy content, but the jump mechanic is definitely very, very useful. So enough of the preamble, let's actually get to what his buffs actually are. So let's go through his captain ability. This is with level limit break 5, and it will go ahead and give the crew a 4.5 times attack boost and a 1.3 health boost. Recovery and tandem slots are also beneficial to the crew, and then gives himself a 5 times attack boost instead. So pretty simple stuff, you know, relatively good attack boost, health boost, slots, and then gives himself specifically a little bit more attack boost instead. Nothing too confusing there. Very, very simple captain ability. But of course, as using him as a captain, you'll get access to his captain action. Now remember, to or in order to activate these captain actions, you have to swipe downwards on the character to activate it. And this captain action is titled Skywalk. And word for word, what it says is that you cannot attack right after using Skywalk, but it protects the character from certain status effects and then further boosts that character's attack by two times in the following turn. Can only be used when other crew members are available to attack. So essentially, when you jump in the air, that is like using up this character's normal attacking turn. When you activate the jump, the character becomes basically invisible, very similar to what happens when you activate Toki. When you activate Toki, the character becomes essentially invisible, where they cannot be affected by very specific debuffs like Bind, Despair, Paralysis, Special Reverse, Slot Bind, Slot Change Impossible, lots of really cool mechanics you can use to get around that with, which is really nice. But then, of course, when you activate Skywalk with Sanji, is that you can't attack during that turn that you activate it. But essentially, the way that you want to work it is, is you want to use the Skywalk, move into the next stage, avoid those debuffs, and then during that next attacking turn, Sanji has a double attack boost that is passively activated. So it's not like an actual buff that is given to Sanji. It's just passively activated within his base stats, which makes him hit harder, which is great. So he just hits harder and he avoids a bunch of debuffs, but it can be a little bit finicky to use because the turn you activate the Skywalk, you can't attack with him. So it can be difficult to use effectively. 
But when you, when it is used effectively, it is awesome because it just means that in certain instances, you just don't need to bring utility for certain gimmicks, which is great. Obviously, the skywalking mechanic allows you to basically avoid despair if you're running double Sanji, which is great. Uh, of course, you have to use it at the right time. You can avoid bind for your captains, special reverse for your captains. There's just really, really cool things you can do with it. And of course, when you do do it, he hits way harder. And of course, you can go ahead and hybrid Sanji with a couple of different characters too, because he is Int, he's a fighter, and he is a powerhouse character. And also, the fact is, you know, it actually is a little bit more optimal to actually use a hybrid scenario because of the fact that when you activate, how you know, when you have both Sanjis activated, you know, Sanji only gives the crew a 4.5 times attack boost, but then he gives himself the 5 times, which actually does mean if you're running double Sanji, that one Sanji gives himself the 5 times, and then he only gets 4.5 from the other Sanji. So realistically, if you want to be using Sanji for more damage, that is, you would probably want to go ahead and use Sanji and a hybrid captain. But if you really want to abuse the Skywalk to a to get around gimmicks and such, then double Sanji definitely is the way to go. But of course, it doesn't end there. Sanji has a really nice upgrade to his special ability, where now it does 200,000 damage to all enemies, and then changes all slots, including block, into matching, and also will boost the chain multiplier by a 1.4 for one turn, and then reduces chain coefficient reduction, chain lock, burn, and paralysis, all by seven turns. And then if this character is the captain or the friend captain, then he gives himself a 1,200 base attack boost for one turn. So the special ability got a massive upgrade, removing those chain debuffs and also burn and paralysis is a really nice touch. You know, it's not something that you realistically think about, but again, it's just a nice way to get around additional gimmicks. They also made a humongous change with the way that he deals with slots, where previously it was only giving himself a slot and I believe it gave adjacent slots as matching. And I think maybe it also changed recovery in tandem. I can't remember exactly what it was, but now it's just straight up just change all slots, including block into matching, which is obviously a massive, massive change. And then a 1.4 chain boost is also very cool. So remember that the way that Sanji is working is Sanji's very self-centered. He makes it so that he himself hits very hard against the enemy. So you want to make sure Sanji's like the last character to attack. So providing a huge chain boost to the team makes you know abusing Sanji in the way that he likes to beat content and makes it more self-sufficient and it makes it more easier to use because it means when Sanji hits last he's going to have a higher chain multiplier you can stack it with chain boundary mechanics but of course he doesn't provide the crew with an attack boost or an orb boost or color affinity so you will still have to use other characters in order to facilitate that which I do in a lot of circumstances with Toki as well as the Jinbei for color affinity, attack and all boost. It's really nice to use those characters in tandem with Sanji to get some really cool stuff going your way. And realistically, I actually kind of like that he doesn't boost attack and orbs because I think that with the way that this character is kind of designed, it makes a lot of sense why he doesn't do that. You know, providing utility, giving himself a base attack boost, which, you know, base attack boosts are relatively uncommon compared to attack and orb boosting effects, which means that you can just inject whatever attack and orb boost you want onto the team and then abuse the rest of Sanji's mechanics to however you want to beat the content, which I think makes a lot of sense. So overall, I think that Sanji is a pretty decent upgrade. He got some really nice changes and obviously his captain ability upgrade is really nice. He's going to hit way harder than what he used to. But realistically, his special ability is where you're going to see the most play. He's mainly going to be seeing a lot of play as a crewmate on your team. And with that special ability, providing a full board of slots, damage dealing special, huge chain boost, great utility, and also giving himself a base attack boost, though that is only activated if he is the captain, this character is very solid. Also something to note is that when he is a crewmate, he does provide recovery and tandem slots beneficial to the crew. So that's actually a really nice crewmate ability that he'll have. And also the fact that he is a damage dealing special means that you can have like Halloween law on him, for example, to give you an orb boost. So he'll provide a full board of matching slots and he'll provide an orb boosting special. Remember, it is a Sanji character, so he gets access to a couple of really good supports too. So overall, there's really a lot to like about this Sanji. So I think that this is going to be a character that is going to see some niche usage for sure. 
Um, I wonder if this character is going to be boosted in upcoming events due to the fact that obviously his level limit break just came out, same as the other movie legends. But that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about this new Sanji down below in the comment section. Really hope you guys have enjoyed this one. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.